so right now we're working on the MDN web docs. It's the JavaScript building blocks assessment, the image gallery. So now that we've looked at the fundamental building blocks of JavaScript, we'll test your knowledge of loops, functions, conditionals, and events by getting you to build a fairly common item you'll see on a lot of websites, a JavaScript powered image gallery. Starting point. To get this assessment started, you should go and grab the zip file for the example and unzip it somewhere on your computer. Or we can use an online editor like CodePen. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have the files. I thought I did. We're using CodePen. Hopefully that'll open up in VS Code. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll paste the code in the code pen just so we'll be able to see it live. Hey, do any of you guys have Streamlabs? No, what is that? Streamlabs, check it out, dude. Streamlabs, uh, it's really useful. Like you can live stream with it. And then what I have for- For like uh, YouTube? All right, so we, down we downloaded the file, zipped it and put it in a folder and opened it up in our text editor, which is, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Project brief, you have been provided with some HTML, CSS, and image assets in a few lines of JavaScript code. You need to write the necessary JavaScript to turn this into a working program. The HTML body looks like this. Uh, so you can see there's a header one a div with an image, another div, and a button in it. So here's an example of what the image gallery looks like. The most in interesting parts of the example CSS file, absolutely, uh, absolutely position the three elements inside the full image div, the image in which the full size image is displayed, an empty div that is sized to be the same size as the image and put right over the top of it that is used to apply darkening effect to the image via semi-transparent background color and a button that is used to control the darkening effect. So that's what uh, this div is, is it overlays the image to darken it by changing the CSS with a button. And uh, set the width of any image inside the thumb bar div so-called thumbnail images to 20% and float them to the left so they sit next to one another on a line. So let's see if that's actually... Yeah, that's actually already done in the code. All right, so our JavaScript is gonna need to loop through all the images and for each one insert an image element inside the thumb bar div, that will be embedded, uh, that will embed that image in the page. Attach an on-click handler to each image inside the thumb bar div so that when they're clicked, the corresponding image will be displayed in the displayed image, uh, image element. And attach an on-click handler to the button so that when it is clicked, a darkened effect is applied to this full-size image. When it is clicked again, the darkened effect is removed again. To give you more of an idea, have a look at the finished example, no peeking at the source code. So hopefully our image gallery will look like this one. All right, so start off in just see the JavaScript they have. 
a variable with a displayed image, which is just a query selector for the displayed image class. Uh, a thumb, a variable called thumbbar, which is a query selector for the thumbbar class. A variable button, which is document selector for a button, a query selector for a button. Overlay, which is a query selector for the overlay class, and a basic start for what we want the JavaScript to do. So. The following sections describe what you need to do. First thing we want to do is loop through the images. We've already provided you with lines that store a reference to the thumbbar div inside a variable called thumbbar, create a new image element, set its source attribute to a placeholder value, XXX, and append this new image element inside the thumbbar. You need to put the section of code below the looping through images comment inside a loop that loops through all five images you just need to loop through five numbers, one representing each image. In each loop iteration, replace the uh, XXX placeholder value with a string that will equal the path to the image in each case. We are setting the value of the source attribute to this value in each case. Bear in mind that in each case, the image is inside the images directory and its name is pick.1.jpg, pick2.jpg, et cetera. So, let me create element image. Thumbbar pinch. Okay. So, I think uh, we can start with a for loop. Let I zero. I less than. Should just I guess be. So we know it's five. We can do five. Um, so the first thing we want to do is put the section of code below the looping through images comments. Loop through all five images. All right. So new image creates a new image. The placeholder value. So we want to change the guess, source. We need to get the source attribute with the um, um, display image and variable. Yeah, so we just want to do this for each loop. Uh, create a new image that. And then, so things in the same directory, you start like that. So we, I think the this the three this code block will like be inside the loop. Uh, oh yeah, because it has to create a new image each each loop, right? Yeah, it should be inside the loop. Okay, so let me put both this stuff. Well, we're going to want to do this inside the loop too. Then uh, this dot source, we're going to add the, um, the path, the path for the image. Yeah. Now we specify for like, okay, we can do anything. Uh, the picture name is uh, images and then pick and then Let's, uh, I. Oh, wait. Oh, if we use a template literal, we could. Right 
here, we could use a variable and have that yeah. be i. Yes. And then, so for each loop, it'll create a new image. It'll set the attribute to that. And then uh, it'll append the new image to the thumb bar. PG. You have to add the, the, oh. the image yeah. uh, format. <laughs> So that's all we want to do for the loop, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So let's go on. Adding right. and add to each thumbnail. Thumbnail image. In each loop iteration, you need to add an on-click handler to the current new image. This should, all right, it's going to do three different things. Find the value of the source attribute of the current image. This can be done running the get attribute function on the image in each case and passing it in, passing it a parameter of source in each case. But how to get the image? Using new image won't work as the loop is completed before the event handlers are applied. Doing it this way would result in the source value of the last image being returned in every case. To solve this, bear in mind that in the case of each event handler, the image is the target of the handler. How about getting the information from the event object? Then, uh, run a function passing it the return source value as a parameter. You can call this function whatever you like. This event handler function should set the source attribute value of the displayed image source to the source value passed in as a parameter. I've already provided you with a line that stores a reference to the relevant image in a variable called displayed image. Note that we want a defined named function here. All right, so let's go back to the top. So each loop iteration add an on click handler to the current new image. This should All right, we want it on click. Right? Yeah, so within the bracket, click, click not on click. Do you click? It's just click. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Then the function. We want it to be a named function, right? So we can actually just create the function and then we can create a nameless function instead. So we oh, just pass no no, we can we can create it within okay. Let, let's just call the function. Okay. Let's create it outside the loop then call the function afterwards. Uh what do we want to call it? Thumbnail, yeah. yeah. So, what what variable is it? Um, are we passing into the thumbnail. Find the value of the source attribute of the current image. This can be done as a parameter of source in each case. So, we want the parameter to be source, but. How to get the image using the new image so as the loop is completed for the loop. So what doing doing it this way results in some value of the image. So that the find out about getting the information of the event object. Uh,
think that's what we want it to do eventually. Okay. Display image that set attribute source. Okay. So right now we need to change it so source is referencing. We want to do set attribute, or we want to do use get attribute on something. So are, when when you put in the script, they want the image to change. So we are setting the new attribute of the image. So I think this is correct. But since we are passing a, 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 source, a, source, a, source, a source as a parameter, then you don't need to set source to anything again, anything else in the function. Oh, OK. Since you are passing it in already. Oh, OK. I, I see. Yeah. So we just call the thumbnail function within the um, event listener. Yeah. And then? Well, what, what, we need to pass in uh, the source parameter within the thumbnail we call it in the event listener. So, how we reference the source? So we have to pass it in here. Yeah. Which, so should uh, we just copy the one we passed in? Because um, it says don't access, don't do like new image dot get attribute, because it won't access it, right? Yeah. So how do we access the event object? For the um, new image. Isn't it? Can we say new image or test? The only function passing it the return uh, passing it the return um, source value as the parameter. The return source value as the parameter. Return source value. You can call this function whatever you like. You then allow function to set the source attribute value on the display. Display image. Then we bring it to the source value passed in. The parameter we've uh, already provided you with the uh, lines code. Thank you. 
Uh, do you have any ideas how to access the event object? Okay, the new image already has a source. So when we uh, use any image or attachment, we can pick thumbnail, then we, are, we still need to pass the source of the new image into the function so it will change the, the, um, um, the, um, the existing image. Okay, right? so. So, um, can we just copy like the image? Um, the part we um, entered uh, at the beginning and just um, put it within the parentheses. Or there's a way we can just call that source in, uh, the source of the new image. And if it's new, if we, if we, What does new image or source? New image or source return does new image or source return the, the path to the image? Wait, say that again. New image or source. New image or, dot source? Yeah. Okay. I'm just I'm just, I'm just thinking should we, should, we should, we should be able to just call the, the path like the new image path by um, using the new the, the, the variable name with something. New image, new image um, is it attribute dot source or something? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to save uh, this as a variable? Let's try to run it. If it doesn't work, we'll know it. <laughs> okay. It's local, so uh, <laughs> just save it and let's. Uh, Somebody's not even showing them my own. Anyway, yeah, I'm not even looking at the dark thing right here. I'm still looking at the other thing. Always for um. So, do you know how if I wanted to see a live version of my uh, app right now, how I could do it? I, I'm, I'm using um, um, preview to, to like work with um, web, web, um, website. Like I don't need to like use my brother to like check the. It, I, it's a package. Like it's a, uh, this thing. Just try to see if you can download the um, this thing on your. Check for preview. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, that, so I use that instead of my brother most of the time, just so it make my make it work that easier, much faster. You said preview. Yeah, preview. I use it on um, on um, Atom. And I think this is like check. Go down a little bit. Review two point oh. Yeah, oh, just right open there. it and read through it, like the, the details of like the package. Markdown is Review. I think that's it. Yeah, just install it. You can use it to like run your HTML file. Is the one HTML file, MD files, and some other things. Sir. Still installing. Oh. Yeah, it's taking its time. <laughs> yeah. I just don't let terminal on my on my editor, so I don't have to like. Because I've been like working with those moving from terminal to editor every time. It's just stressing me out. So. I just try to download like the terminal, my, download like the system on my editor. So I just pop, just pop up underneath my code and I work with it like with my code. It just makes it easier. So when I want to run my Python program, I just go type in the part to Python and voila. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But I love that. Mix everything. I don't have like go go to terminal, come back to like go 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 from through. I was really used to that, but it's just tiring. <laughs> and I just have to like just pop it up and work on it. You can download if you work with the terminal, uh, like with the uh, also you can download that too. What's wait? What was it called? Terminal. I don't know. Cause I'm using Mac, so like um, uh, it should be console. Or you just type terminal. And see if it, how do you spell that? C e r m i n a l. C r. C t t. Oh, sorry, t. C e r. Oh, terminal. Yeah, terminal. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. Oh, okay. So you can work with like with the console, like on your editor. Oh, okay, that's yeah. Through, through, through. But it's still like it's, it's still working with your like your 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 computers on your computer box. Mm -hmm. it's, you, it's like just mirroring it on your editor. Okay, so you can just open it. Yeah, just do that. Just click on new tab here. You can, so you can just work. You can check for parts like just you can work with it from there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is everything easier for you. Um yeah, you can download this particular one particular AI uh, packet that I'm there like it helps me with like when I when I'm like maybe trying to like um maybe I just um, I just decided to like use a new new a new method like a new method like maybe a, like a built-in method I don't really know much about it yet. All right, so I think it has to do with our ad event listener. Uh, yeah. uh what we're passing it, yeah, the parameter. Oof. Okay, I worked. Uh, what I, I worked on something similar before, but I didn't really understand the whole thing. I just it's actually the tutorial that I worked on, so I didn't understand that part. I just follow through. I see what it was doing, but I didn't understand like the same part. You can see, you see that yeah. part similar. Like it's, it's for a gallery, uh, a photo gallery also, but it's a bit complex. It's on okay, the, on the website. So, so just let me look through this. So I think you can use you can call the image source from the way we did before. You see this part. The yeah. large version the image so, so large version is uh, uh okay you need to call the image distance from Um, so it set the attribute of the main image to like the the which the, the display image. Uh, let's read. I, I think let's read through um, and the, the, the module before the module for what the module for a particular for the main gallery. What do you think? Let's 
let's read through events again. What do you think? Yeah. Try to. So, <clears throat> events are action or current actions in the system. You have to read that, like, just go through quickly. Yeah. Uh, you can just go through it. Yeah, we can skim through it to try to find what we need. So, you saying this uh, modeling types of um, things that exist in JavaScript, like mouse, uh, press. Uh, what's the difference between click and press? I don't get. I didn't know the same. We are clicking on something. You are pressing it also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confusing the randomness. A lot of things that you like that takes a lot, like you work on JavaScript, you work on it very, very easily on Python. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. I started working on API and Python today, so I'm trying to get the angle of the whole thing because we were talking about it yesterday. And the book I was reading just it was as if the book knew I was, I was going to like go get to that point. So the next chapter I just fell in was. API. Just started working on this today. So, we have one more before we start, before we go into the client API mode for Nambian. So, okay. Uh, Preventing default name. Okay, so it looks like. Uh, if I think if in the code where we have the thumbnail new image dot source, okay. if uh, instead of dot source, we use dot get attribute source. Okay, you know what? We're setting that to here. And we'll be getting okay. So, because I think what happens is through each loop, uh, whenever the image will be clicked, okay. the event will uh, initiate, and then the event object will be uh, the image that's clicked, and the get attribute will try to access the source attribute of the image. And then, I think in parentheses there. Like the okay. And it, I think it, it has to be a string, but I'm not sure. Okay. Let's just okay. Let's take the event reference to Steve and um, if if no the event you have and then the yeah method. I think I'm confusing them to do it inside the circle. Thank you. 
Did that change the preview or no? No, I didn't check the No. I think it should be in parentheses. Uh, let's go back. I just is our loop okay? I just want to make sure that's not. Oh, so oh, it, 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 oh, 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 our loop is starting from zero. It should be starting from one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, I, yeah. So, okay. My, my There's a couple focused. things <laughs> we might have been messing up. All uh, right. Okay. Do you know what? Okay. Yeah. I think the function, we, like, we all right with the function, um, we get attributes from the book. Like, uh, so we just make the set attributes source. Uh, maybe we don't need to call new image. Uh, just call it E real quick. Uh, e. In, no, inside the thumbnail, sorry. So okay. to the, yeah. Because maybe since uh, new image is a variable, it's trying to get that. We should be getting, why. oh, we should be, okay, wait. We are trying to, uh, we, okay, we are getting the image, the, the, oh, sorry, we are getting the new image. Hold on. We're not clicking on new image. We are clicking on the display image, the existing image. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not on the screen yet. So yeah. We are so we're screen. trying to click on something that's not there. That's yeah, why it's not so doing it, anything. I think it should be display image. Yeah. Then we can. Yeah, we can. We can leave the um, new image. This works, I hope. Oh. Yeah. Well, I think we'll get, yeah, like we we'll get this one. This one starts from one. This one goes. Okay. Then we change one. Here, change the new image because I think in the thumbnail we don't want to. I think since that's a variable already initiated, it's trying to get that attribute each time. And we want it to do the, get the attribute for the event object. Okay, so what did I think? Uh, so just delete that and call it E. E. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then check and see if that changes anything. Just cause I, I was thinking since it, it's trying to do an already declared variable. That was a problem. Now, okay, wait, okay. The logic of the old thing is the existing image. When we click on the existing image, it changes to like the new image. So, 
there's, there's, you, you are going to attach the, the event listener to the existing image. Yeah. Right? Then when we attach the event listener to the existing image, we click here. Yeah, when you put, then the, the, the new image, we are, the, the, we, are, we, are, we are getting the, uh, the, new, the new source for the new image. So I think it's going to be new the get attribute. You're passing it into this and changing the display image. We're changing this, this source for the display image to the new image. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so um, the issue now is that we don't even know what is. Maybe in the set attribute. Uh, Should this line be in the loop at all? Okay, let's read to the uh, question again. Let's check. Yeah, because it says in each loop iteration, you need to add an on click handler to the current new image. Oh, wait. So, yeah, we do want it on the new image. Wait. Yep. Yeah. You know what? Maybe our loop isn't. Uh... Yeah, the the loop supposed to run five times. Okay, let's go through like the. The whole thing from the beginning again. Okay, put the section of code below the loop through images. Connect inside the loop, uh, loop through all five images. Okay. From less than or equal to five images. Let's need to loop through, loop through five times, one representing each image. In each loop, iteration replace the xx for uh, this uh, other value. String that we call the path to the image in each case is this. Yeah, so it's supposed to create an each loop iteration, uh, creates a new image tag in the new image variable, sets the attribute and we are uh, it as the, the correct place. But wait, and the thumb bar is not even showing. That's yeah, that's what, that's what I just noticed. The thumb bar is not showing up. That's, yeah, so our loop is wrong or something. Well, I think we're not supposed. We're not supposed. I don't think we're supposed to even. Think yeah, we're supposed to click on the thumbnails the thumb, and then yes. switch. Yes. So the thumbnails are not even showing. That's the issue. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, they should be though. And a thumbnail uh, append child should be, it should be within this um div class. It should be within should, the, the, the five thumb thumb bars should be within this. Yeah. And I think that is what this line is doing. That's what I thought, but I don't know why it's not showing up then. If it is, you know. That's why I thought maybe our loop is wrong, but it looks... I don't know what we messed up on. Because I think it uses everything correctly. Do we want to uh, delete this last part and see if we can just get the thumbnail showing up first and then 
we'll worry we, about we, the on click handler. We can commit it though today. Yeah. So it, it's not it's not it doesn't even show it doesn't show it at all. Yeah, but it sh should be so what's what are we doing wrong? <laughs> Maybe we do we want to declare the new image inside the loop? Is that maybe supposed to be outside the loop? No, because it won't create a new image each time then. It only. Yeah, yeah. So it's supposed yeah. to create a new image. Like, loop is always go five times and create yeah. new image every time. So I think all of the. All of this should be within the loop, and to append append the new image each time it uh, appends the new image to the thumb bar each time it creates a new image. So I think those things in the loop are yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah in mind, yeah. Where are we messing up then? In each case, the image is inside. The image inside the image is directly. I'm adding in the you should find the value of the subject to do for the current image. This can be done by running get as a function. I'm really having trouble seeing where we messed up.
Yeah, I am actually having a little bit of trouble because I th- it it re- I can't see anything wrong with the code right now. I think the thumbnail should be showing up, right? Yeah. No, it's not the first picture. This is crazy. I really there has to be something. Yeah, of course there's something. We just, we just, <laughs> just can't see it yet. Because it will be the computer can be right. It created the first thumbnail, but it's not creating the rest of them now in the JavaScript oh, side, at you, least. In the JavaScript, like when you preview it, are you saying a like, thumbnail? Oh, okay. I can see. Yeah, see? Shit. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But at least you're saying something that's developing, so you can work. <laughs> you can work on the rest. I what I just what the fuck is Pichu doing since? How can we just see the rest? Okay, wait, I think I should have just be uh be uh loaded with you. You you get I should have already loaded with you. <laughs> oh my goodness, we. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. Oh. So I, I had to reload the Wow. We were looking for an air that didn't exist. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was why it was so difficult to yeah, I was like, I don't know what we're doing wrong. I was like, I unless we just don't understand loops in the well, unless we don't understand the script at all. <laughs> I was like, I I thought we knew that, uh, something, but apparently we learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. oh my goodness! It's already like okay. All right, so let's 
oh, what functionality we actually have because yeah. it's been working for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just work on like the, the click. The click is not. I think the click is not working yet. Yeah, because uh, w click on the displayed image. I think that'll switch it. Andy. Okay. Well, go back to the code. Yeah. I think this this even lighting us up like we need to like. Uh, we we want to be we want to click on the new images that are created. So we don't want to the event listener on displayed image. We want it on new image. Okay. Okay. But when we click on the thumbnail, then the thumbnail is the new image, right? Yeah. And then yeah, that should. Change that, the displayed yeah, image. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's what we want. <laughs> okay, well, what are we changing? Uh, this this part of uh, all right. I don't think this. Uh, uh, yeah. we're changing the displayed image. So it should be. Uh, okay, we're passing. Yeah, it's, I think it's all right because we're passing in the path for the new image into the display image in the thumbnail function, right? Yeah. Let's see if it works. I'm not using, um, I'll, let me ignore uh, preview for the meantime. It's not working. Oh, let me see this one in here. Not turn in here also. It's not even triggering the event listener at all. Because if it's not working and there's no error throwing, then the event, I don't think the event listener is working. Let's spell it right. You add event. Is not. I got the spelling correct. Okay. Uh. So I was reading. I'm reading on MDN, and. Okay. So when uh, an event is triggered, there's uh property that you can call event.target, which is the reference to the object that dispatched the event, which I think is what we want to use. Uh, if you go on MDN and just search event.target, it'll show you. Because I remembered uh, when I was doing uh, one, one of the drum kit apps, that's something that showed up in the code. Okay. When we were trying to access uh, the okay. object that started an event. The every part of the event is that it is referring to the object that starts the event. It is different from the event that starts the event that the event and like it's for doing the opening of the event. So where we call thumbnail, we want to do event.target. Our, uh, instead so of, instead of new image, put event.target there. Because the event target will is the image. And then we do uh, get attribute. So get attribute. Yeah. That should actually uh, get the source so from the picture. So what person is? Uh, I think the string source. Okay, getting the uh, the source actually from like the the um the vendor type to the new image. Yeah. And then it should a function should change the displayed image source to that. So it should be working. Exit out of the previewer, I guess, and open it back up. I guess that's what we gotta oh. do. <laughs> now it's just showing one, one image, like the one thumbnail and one an image. <laughs> so I don't think the loop is like um, the loop should be creating an image, but why it's, why the loop is not actually working the image in this time. Um. Okay, I don't think this one affects uh, the. Uh, let's uh, should this thing, should this line be inside the loop? 
because the loop just creates the new images. One, they create the new images and the thumbnail. I think so, because we want an event listener on each new image. Oh, okay. And the only way to access each new image would be inside the loop, because that's where they're created. This one part, okay. Find the value of the source attribute of the current image. This can be done by running the get attribute function so on, the, on the image in each case and passing it the parameter source in each case. In each case, okay, I think it's a loop you're referring to. But how to get the image? Using new image won't work as the loop is completed before the event handler are applied. The loop is completed before the event handler applied. In it, this way will result in the sum value of the last image from the front in each case. So please bear in mind that in the case of each event handler, the uh, image is the target of the uh, of the uh, handler of the handler how about getting the uh, information from the object Okay, you know, when we create um, the thumbnails, like the thumbbars, like when we yeah. are painting, they already have their, the, the thumbbars have their path already. Yeah, so we don't even need, I don't think we need this line in the loop. Since the thumbnails, the, 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 the thumbnails, they have their path already. Right? Okay, let's just, let's yeah. try it. You can break the code. More than you've done. Yeah. The new image. But I don't think when I said the new image outside of the loop. Because it's been declared in the loop, like scope, like it's uh, a local scope within the loop, so we can we can use it outside the loop. But doesn't it override each time? Because there's not five different new image variables. There's only the one. I think it gets overridden in each loop. You see what you see what I'm saying? Okay, so there's an error and the new image and then even if I get up to this. Yeah, I'm called type error. Can I read property target of undefined or undefined as okay, that means the the target of undefined, I mean image new image on the find outside the loop. So uh, I think this will be within the loop. So now to make it work is a problem. <coughs> okay. Maybe the parameter we're passing it isn't. Okay. So the get attribute should um, Okay, I think what we're, what we're passing is because when we get, we are getting the source attribute. So 
But then it's just starting to from new image. So I think that the event that uh, we get actually, well, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure of like the event the target that okay. Yeah, because look at the example how they use it. So whenever someone clicks a list element, it changes the style visibility to hidden, which is essentially what we're doing. Whenever someone clicks an image, it should instead of changing the style, it should change the source. So maybe we need to do the event dot target in the thumbnail yes, declaration, that's, not up that's, here. Yeah, that's what I was. I was, I was. So it should be. Uh, why is it to get this? Isn't it to get the source attribute? So it should be. It should be. Um, should replace this, I guess. Yeah. Seem to be returning the source like the path. Right? Yeah, and then just call that event, I think is all you have to do. I should yeah. So I wouldn't need to pass anything when I call I don't need to pass anything when I when I call it. I don't yes. think so. I, I don't I don't think I even need to use brackets. Because you can see within um the event if I after the height. I should hide parentheses, but I don't, I don't say in parentheses there. I shouldn't name this thing thumbnail. Thumbnail, okay, so thumbnail is referring to the small picture. Let's say new uh, picture. Uh, we can call it a uh, switch or something like that because it's switching the pictures. Okay. Change source or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Any Anyone you want to choose. <laughs> uh, it's just a big image. Okay, that works. <laughs> I'm complicating the issue. Those are trying to make it up with financial. They didn't even have a comment section. It's not what the function is doing. Oh, it's to check. Um, code error cannot be property target with um, undefined switch. Oh, because when we call target, I think, in the original yeah. function, there hasn't been an event listener. Um, okay. I don't really get the same. Okay. <laughs> I really get what you said. Though. Uh, wait. Okay, we didn't like this. Like, where, where are you going Maybe the function that? has to be before the event listener, so oh, before oh, the okay. loop. Oh, okay. So it can access it. Maybe that's. Still the same thing, so the position of the doesn't matter. Um, Oh, you have to close parentheses. Oh, yeah, because in their example, they didn't have the. Just narrow. Let's see. 
Hey! We just didn't need the parentheses. <laughs> we really are just all night. <laughs> just, just really trying to make this a lot harder than it needs to be. <laughs> okay, now let's go. Let's work on like the dark. The darken. Oh my goodness. Every oh. problem we run into is not a real problem. <laughs> we make it yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. That was like, that's, that was, I read something like, um, like a writing program is like not really the issue. Like writing program is more of you just writing books. Then you have to debug what you wrote. You get. Yeah. <laughs> like writing uh, program is like you write, you are just writing books. And after you finish writing the book, then you debug the book you just wrote. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. <laughs> uh, at least we'll wait, like, we conquered it, so let's, let's move along. Okay. All right. Uh, writing, so, uh, inventing that are wrong, detecting, flash lighting, uh, blocking. Uh, that just these are uh, darkening, slash lighting buttons. We've already provided the line that stores the reference to the button, variable code, it's in. You need to um, add a um, complete handler that checks the current class name and set 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 on the current class name set on the uh, button. So, so you can again achieve this by using get attribute. So if the class let's 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 clear on first then we are uh, the button we're using it to call uh, an event listener which Click, right? Click, yep. And then a function that I guess you can make right there if you want. And yes, um, function darken or something like that. <laughs> so you just leave, let me, let's see this within, like, we, we can just leave it nameless. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can, yeah, leave it nameless. And then, okay. so the first thing we want to do is. Get the current check class name on the button. Current class name. Check the current class name on the button. You can click it. Once so click button it. dot get attribute class. Can we use the event? Uh, yeah, yeah. Get attribute and then class. Since class an attribute. So we're saving it again. Okay. I'll get that if the class name is dark, okay. You can just let's assign it to a variable. We can use that way. Yeah. Because so assign it to a variable. Let's say uh, mode or something like that. Variable mode. Bar, or something. Never using var again. Um let's say um mode. brightness or something. Mode brightness, yeah. Okay. So then, if mode is darken, in parentheses, all this stuff. Okay. Like, uh, I've, been, I've been working on Python all this, so don't blame me. Yeah, so you, <laughs> I understand. It's got to be hard switching languages. <laughs> yeah, I, I just go into it like recently because I just tried to like work on work on it. Like I, I feel like every time people like. I work on Python, so I work on Java too. I get used to it. Like I've, at first, I was like confused. I was I just kept working on it, but I didn't. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just kept working on it. I just kept. I, I kept working on it for like I think months. I didn't really know what I was doing. Because I, it was just confusing. Sometimes yeah. I, 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 I like I'm working on like a particular program on, on Python, and I'll be writing JavaScript code. And I have to like <laughs> go back and re really, like change the syntax and. Oh. But mm -hmm. I'm getting used to it. It's like a point now. So. I still mix it up at some time, so it's not as if I'm perfect. <laughs> change. Don't worry, I'll try to catch your Python in JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> you change the button class to light, okay? Uh, okay, we are changing. Okay, let's just give me the time. Dot um, set. Last. Yep. Comma and then light. Can you change set attributes? 
because we need to change the background color and the text I content. Think, hold on, like, the great thing. Like, there's already um, a, uh, there's, uh, a style for light and dark. So when we change the class, we um, um, indirectly change the, the, like, the, the, um, the styling. I think there should be a um, style for light and dark. I work with something similar, so I, 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 I just click on me for that particular part of the book. Then we start for light and dark. Oh. No, because keep reading. I think, see, they want us to change the text content to lighten in the background color of the yeah. overlay to... When we, when we change the book, okay, we've changed the, um, the class um, attributes. Then after yeah. that, class is so, using the set attribute. It's text content to lighten. Text content. Which you can just do uh, e dot target text content, I think. D dot text content. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. That's not, I mean, the, I mean, the, the value, like, the, the place, this is the placeholder, or the placeholder, right? Yeah. Text, uh, I just want to double check that's actually called that. <laughs> I think I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. So I think it was within one of the code we, um, one of like the problems we worked on MDN. Yeah. Capital C. And, uh, well, just confirm. Just confirm it on MDN. So we sure. And now we want to do another set of tribute and change the okay. background color. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, no, not the but not of the target, not of the button, of the overlay. So do okay, overlay okay. dot set a tribute. Oh, okay, okay. okay we're changing the set attribute background. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, 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 um, we're changing the style here. Yeah, so you can, I don't think you can use, but you can use this, this, um, I think I saw something in good stuff. We um some um, about this thing that um style the background and you just select it to something else. We just want to get like the. Uh, what are you looking for? Uh, it's to change style. Oh yeah, uh, you can do dot style and then do dot background Dark color. Yeah, that was to, that was good to be sure. Background, um, I think it might be camel case. I think when you are changing the style to this, yeah, that RGB. Well, let's confirm like this the background name, like the way we're going to write it.
Uh, it does go to Camel Case. Oh, so you're correct this week? Yeah, I just looked it up. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, what was I supposed to do? This country um, is. Okay, um, after changing the following line, line to where the basis of the function is changing. Okay, 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 we will go to the right. So the content which is equal to us. Okay, we need to use, now we've got to do light and light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah it was, it's so easy when we don't make it a lot harder than it needs to be. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just, um, Man, we could have done this like an hour and a half quicker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she has been. This works better. So, uh, we're we'll changing. Let's see. Zero zero zero. Okay. And there we go. Oh. There's the image gallery. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> A little bit harder than it needed to be, but we got there in the end, guys. Yeah. Okay. Um <clears throat> I didn't feature stuff bouncing. Ball demo. Are you recording? Um, Rush? Yeah, what's up? Are you recording? Yeah, I'm recording, sorry. <laughs> okay. In this assessment, you're expected to use the bouncing ball demo from the previous article and the starting point and add some new and interesting features to it. Starting point to get this assessment started, make a local copy of index finish that will be from our last article in the directory in your local computer.
Je vais faire une download de... Okay, <clears throat> note, alternatively, you could use the site in order to do the assessment but the information to the which would employ the very day I use it and have the separate JavaScript as well. We could put them in line. So, the project, um, project group. A bouncing board demo is fun, but now we want to make it a little bit more interactive by adding user control of the rule cycle, which will be the control if you practice them. We also want to test the object fusion skills by creating a generic shape, shape object that our balls and evil cycle can generic generic from. Finally, we want to add a score counter to track the number of balls left to capture. So this picture gives us and gives you an idea of what we of what the finished program should look like. Okay. So this one we hit in the housing goals. To give you um to give you more of an idea, I will look at the finished example of what we can do. Okay, so once it bounces there, this it is eats the them. Yeah. yeah, this one, it's once anyone passed through it, also, like you can see that one disappeared. Yeah, so it's out the uh, okay. and the more it the, the, the count increases, yeah. So, what can you learn the similar to the Python? You said you're working on something similar in Python? I've worked on like similar things on Python. Like. Oh, okay. Hopefully it's not too difficult then. <laughs> yeah, it's JavaScript. JavaScript is always complicated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, steps complete. The following section describe what you need to do. Create our new objects. First of all, change your existing ball constructor so that it becomes a shape. Constructor and add a new ball constructor. Okay, so, uh, You're working on it on you're working on you're using it on um on code pen. Yeah. Okay. I have the code pen. I don't know why I I, I still try to download it. I think I need it uh I need it offline also so when I need when I want to go with it, I can work with it in my Azure kind. It's okay. Um, let me see this. Uh, 
the abandon this. I just let's just use the good one good thing. Yeah, I don't think I understand what this means. <coughs> so Okay. <coughs> First of all, change your existing ball constructor so that it becomes a shape constructor. So yeah, the first thing we're doing is changing the ball constructor. This. Yeah, to shape. shape. Shape constructor should be defined to define the x, y, the velocity, the x and velocity, y properties in the same way for all constructors, either each other, but not the color size, color and size. Okay. Um, You should also define a new property called resist. First, initialize the force or right? Um, crash. Yeah. So if, uh, they, if no value for exists is passed, then the value value the force. 
If a new value is passed, that means a true value is passed in. Then, the ball constructor should generate x, y, values to the and <coughs> Why do you make more construction in it? So, uh, No, we need in the class to mm -hmm. right? We are not using the class. How oh, do we make it generic? And even let's just go back to okay. Let's go back to repeat. All right, so I think that's right so far, right? You can, uh, I'm pretty sure the way that you defined it is fine. Okay. You just didn't use a constructor is all, but. Are we supposed uh, to convert it to a class? That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to get us. Oh, oh, you were wondering if we need to make it a class? Yeah, to use the constructor. No, so uh, you can use it as when it's just a function, you can still use the constructor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how we, how we narrate from shape? That's what I'm trying to look for within this person. The device will also describe a level of the array in every time it's object and use project type of object. I think we just go from shape to a project type.
So, uh, you're tr what are you trying to do? Create the new object? Yeah, I'm trying to, like, you, you know, ball is supposed to inherit from ship. Yeah. Uh, here, let me share my screen. I think okay. I have it. So, in MDN, I was looking through the inheritance. And so, this is the example that they did for the teacher constructor that was created from the person. So, mm -hmm. okay, what I did was okay, okay. here, just gave it x, y, vel, velocity, x, velocity, y, and exist. Okay. And then I just made that defaultly true. And then I followed the syntax that they had here where. So, you used the uh, uh, shift. The ball, right? Yeah. So I passed in all all the arguments that ball has, and then in shape dot call, I only pass this, and then all the parameters that are in shape, and then define the this dot color and this dot size how they did in the other uh, example, in the other ball constructor. So I think that's all we have to do. Yeah. It says we shouldn't have to update anything else. Yeah. All right. So defining the evil circle. Now it's time to meet the bad guy, the evil circle object. Our game is only going to involve one evil circle, but we are still going to define it using a constructor that inherits from shape to give you some practice. You might want to add another circle to the app later on that can be controlled by another player or have several computer controlled evil circles. You're probably not going to take over the world with a single evil circle, but it will do for this assessment. So the evil circle constructor should inherit x, y, velocity, x, velocity, velocity, y, and exists from shape, but velocity, x, and velocity, y should always equal 20. Okay. So, so we can just write a function up down. Uh, Try to share a screen so we can still be able to like look through the. Uh, Wait, can you not see my screen? I can see your screen, but like the question, so we can compare while we're writing the code. So oh, can, okay. So yeah. We'll be mm. well, should I share my screen, bro? Uh, yeah, you can share yours. Let me. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to confirm what the function is. Uh, the state grow updates and mission uh, detector. Yes, mission detector. Did go go draw update and the parameter should be able to exactly say same as yeah it should it should look just like ball yeah, except without yeah, color and size I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for the collision detector function to and what collision detector the third function collision detect it's the collision detector Function. I just want to find it. You can only find it. Um, I know it's something like collision detect. Is there, is there a function named collision detect? Uh, not, a, not a function, but there. Yeah, yeah, there is collision detect. It's uh, under the balls.prototype.update. 
Mm-hmm. Keep going down. It should be. Is it before loop? It's right before loop. Um, go to the code that they give you, the JavaScript file that they give you. It should be in there. Nothing in this JavaScript file, just, just linking to uh, different uh, this things that you can do. Just download this thing. Maybe the style, the HTML, they're all the same. And the file, you just mix it up. So, um, uh, can you share a screenshot? I'll just write the. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, I can do that. Let me show you. This is oh the function is this long. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe we can just copy and paste this. Okay, but it's before the um, the balls, the balls, um, the balls, um, uh, balls are in. Yeah, it's right before it. Okay. That's where they put in the code. Oh, sorry. Probably. Are you still copying it? Are you good? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I should be able to copy this thing from. Um, uh, hello. Hello. Typing you. You think. Um, I'll post in the chat if you want to just copy and paste it from there. Yeah, I copied it from the MDN. Okay, you got it. Yeah. Okay. So, Evil Circle should have four methods as described below. Okay, wait, I'm supposed to call the um, collision detect. Where, where am I supposed to call it? Uh, oh, I don't think you have to call it. it, it well, like after the audio, you must also, you also need to call this method in each frame of animation. Add the following below each frame of animation. I think it should be here. Inside the last loop. Wait, uh oh wait, yeah, yeah. Inside the last loop. 
in call balls eye dot collision detect. Sorry about that. <laughs> so inside the function loop, the for loop there. Yeah. Call it. Okay, so um, you also need to add a parameter. Of yeah. The new ball. It should also define its own properties as follows: color white, size ten. Constructor call and the. Okay, so you should also also relate the parameter to the ball. Um. Okay. You should relate the parameter in the ball. In the new ball. The new ball constructor for the as this parameter should be the okay, okay, okay. I've already done that. Again, remember to define your inherited properties as parameters in the constructor and set the prototyping constructor properties correctly. Okay. So So when we are calling the, this thing, we should give it the true value this way. Wait, uh, do you want to share your screen? You said, yeah, okay. Again, see, okay, let me share. Okay, see what I'm saying. What you have to like assign as is you assign it, uh, assign as is to true. Where yeah, is that's it? what okay, I when you're, uh, uh, the constructor you assign it to true, yeah, right? Within the call, the shape dot call, right? This is okay. I see what you're saying. Uh, how, how do you do? Yeah, I think we should do that in the ball and shape constructor. Like, okay. actually, I don't think you have to put equals because if you look uh, sc on MDN, scroll down a little bit. You see, they want v v uh, velocity X and velocity Y to always equal 20. And in the call, they just replace velocity X and velocity Y with 20. So I think we can just replace exists with true. I think in the ball yeah, think, constructor. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, okay, X, Y. Anyway, we, are, we, are, we are creating a constructor. We are, we are assigning it to. Yeah, so we, don't, we can just pass. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Right. Okay, so let's okay. Uh, at this point, try reloading the code. It will work for the same as this before. This shit is not bouncing. It's not bouncing. So we have broken the code. <coughs> Let me expand this so you can help. Oh. Let me expand this so you can help me um, look through the um, code. Yeah. Is yours still bouncing? No, mine's isn't either. Uh, the none of the balls are showing up. Oh. Yeah. 
look to see that's good and see play the error, play the error like. Yeah, so we haven't touched this part, so we tie it from here, and this is and in this part, the shape comes from it. You need an environment. Trying to see what's wrong. Okay. Uh, if you go into, hmm, here that's weird. Uh, go down into the loop function. And you see how when it says new ball, it's defining all the properties. We added in the new property exists, and it should automatically go to true, but it doesn't. But if you add in true after the second random negative seven seven, okay. if you put in true and then comma, the balls show up. Okay. Um, this one is um, the first value, which is um. X coordinate. X coordinate, Y coordinate, velocity, X velocity, Y, then yeah. exist. Yeah, so this right one. now, this is the exists. So that's why I don't think anything's showing up. And then put a comma. Okay. Let's try uh, using um, exist equals from true here. You see? So, you can see. So, yeah. you just oh, 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 shit. Wait, uh, yeah. here, just put a comma after the random. Just put another comma and see if destruct. No, I was seeing if it would like destructor it and move on to the next. Uh, oh, okay. Either way, you destructor within uh, the parentheses also. Yeah, I just, I know. Yeah. Hmm.
You can't create a game without a loop. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Every game has, has like the main loop that um, runs the whole program. Like yeah. <laughs> There's always some so like, that starts like, everything. everything. Yeah. So you just call, like you create like the uh, game functions somewhere, then you call the functions and you want like the loop to execute every time, every now and then. And the function within them might be like, you know, that other, other, other function that you call within the function itself. <clears throat> All right, so so it's working now, right? Yeah, but like uh, you, should, you should be able to like uh, use the intelligence from like top to work with it. So it's supposed to initialize with the truth. But I don't think if you are supposed to initialize the truth from the top, we are supposed to do it here. Those ones have been all, all these ones have been initialized up here. Yeah, so I guess that's why we need to put the true there, cause. Yeah, so let's just remove this. Let's just. Uh, yeah, so we don't need that there. It just exists. Just, just the okay. So, let to comment on this for a second. Um, <clears throat> So we should be good to move on to the next section, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The game is running now. So right now we're defining evil circle. Yeah. Um, the evil circle constructor should inherit x, y, velocity x, velocity y, and exists from shape, but velocity, velocity x and velocity y should always equal 20. Okay, we need the evil circle, right? So, we can create the evil circle down here. But like after the first initial, the first uh, relation for ball, right? Yeah. Uh, evil circle constructor, yeah. And then I think it has all the properties that ball has, yeah. Or parameters, sorry. <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then they show you that. I don't think it has, it has color and size, does it? Oh, it does. It does, it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we actually define those in it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, x, uh, x and velocity y equals 20. So should we pass 20 instead of, right? Yep. So it's always in that same position. Yeah. This x, y, okay, 20, then the x, okay. Then so this will so follow. Follow it just right again. Make sure it's the string white. Yeah. 
for so is it is it better we just um equate it here then pass in color normally here? yeah okay. we, we really need here is just uh, yeah, ignoring the parameter was passed in why ignore it if you're going to why pass it if you're going to ignore it right yeah that's weird <laughs> Maybe we'll be doing something or so we can initialize it here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There. Yeah, you can initial. Yeah, we initialize what we call the function. Okay. Then we um, so we again remember to define your inherited properties as parameters with the constructor. And I set the uh, prop prototype and constructor properties correctly. Give to work. Right. So wait, all right, defining evil circle. Why is this so dangerous? Oh, okay. You said we should have four methods as described, bro. The method has the same purpose of the uh, I think we should, we should move this table, but it shouldn't be between like, it's so it has its own Simple as both draw method. Um, draws the object instance on the canvas to work in, set in a very similar way. So you can start by copying the drawing which you should then manage. You then make the following changes. You want to draw it. You want to draw it. You want, you want the evil cycle to not build, or rather just have, the, have an outer line stroke. You can achieve this by updating field. We're done for that, for that particular method, right? Uh, so, let me see. This has five functions. We're done for that particular uh, particular function. You said yeah. we have three, we have I think three. that's all you have to change. Uh, we have, we have, we have three. How many functions are we creating? 
three, four. We have we have three more methods to go. So okay. Let me, let me just update. Uh, Let's move to uh, check down. Okay. We do the same thing as the first part of ball, balls of this function. Look to look to see whether the new rule. Get rid of um, the last two lines. Last two lines. We don't want to automatically update the technique. Inside the if statement, if the test returns true, we don't want to recall, we don't want to update the values of x slash y. We want to instead change the value x, y. So the so so the evil circle is bounced back onto the squints slightly. Adding or subtracting is as appropriate the uh, evil circle type part would make sense. Statement if the test returns to okay. if the test returns to a little bit.
For all the if statements, we don't want to change the velocity x and velocity y. We want to change the this dot x and this dot y. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it would be. Um, that would be this dot x, yeah. And then here, yeah, is this dot size. No. Because what it's saying is if the evil circle is appro approaching the right side of the screen, we want to change the x position by subtracting the size of the circle to move it to the left to bring it back onto the screen. X is the the result of the movement of four. Y size is the result of minus five. I mean, it's going to it's like it's on to the right. It means X less than or equal to zero. And that means on the right side. For this second, uh, for this second, uh, well, the first wait. one is going to the right side, sorry. Wait, okay. Okay, X. Okay, okay. Yeah, the second one is when it's on the left, sorry. And yeah, that means, um, oh, no. No, no, no. less than equal to zero. X is less it's uh, greater than or equal to it. So that's when it's on the right. When it's less than or equal to zero, this is on the left. Because the, um, the count that means that this thing counts from, from the left to right, from the top to the bottom. Yes. Okay. So if when it's on the right, the right we're going to update the x. It is on the left. We leave this right. No. Uh, well, in the first one, we want to change the negative this dot x. Uh, we want to change that to this dot size. This one. Yeah. Because what that'll do is change the x position of the of the evil circle. So you can either do minus equals this dot size or equals negative this dot size. Oh yeah, it should be minus equals because we want to add it to the x position or subtract it, I guess, in this case. Okay, so the next one, um, this one is when it's on the left. So when it's on the left, you want to add, Yeah. right? Yeah. So I think we this one will be it's the same one, but it be it be addition, right? Yeah. Okay, this one is um five. And then this is the same thing, but with this dot okay, then, y. This is okay. okay. So this is when it's at the bottom. Then the second, one, the last one is when at the top. Right? Mm hmm That should be everything we need for that. Okay, so set control. Set control. Method we write it right at and key down event listener to the window object so that when certain keyboard keyboard keys are pressed, we can move. Set controls.
when he is pressed, the event object keyboard properties consulted to see when each key is pressed. See, this whole thing is very like, oh, like you know, like, if you actually you've gone to like different programming languages, if you understand like the um, the, 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 the underneath idea of everything, it's just different syntax. Like this whole thing is so mm -hmm. similar to like what I've done on Python. It's just different syntax. So similar, like key down, just everything. Is yeah, I've I've read that in articles. Like once you learn a language, it makes it a lot easier to learn other languages because it's really just a shift of syntax. Just more than, syntax, nothing else. Nothing yeah, else. you're not. It's not like adding in new ideas. Like they still use loops. They still use conditionals. Same basic, same yeah, same basic, same it's just. It may be called slight, something slightly different in a different yeah, language. That might be like a lot easier to like remember. Might be not yeah. Not be as long as it's there, but it's still the same basic, like same idea, basic idea. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, oh. so. Okay. Uh, let's just go through like the code that we pasted. But uh, this, uh, that means this one is hiding this, right? Yeah. By encapsulating it, uh, window the key down function key. So that's like the object, the, yeah, the event uh, object, right? Yeah. If e does key down equals 65, key code, key code equals 65. It changes the x value to. The x velocity. So we subtract the x value from the x velocity. And yeah. Saves it to the x value. So it it should move it down, I think, since we're subtracting. No, no. Yeah, move it to the left. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm moving oh, to the left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then the other one, you're moving it to the right. Then this one, we're moving it uh, yeah. downwards. Then the other one, we're moving it up. No, no. We're moving this one upwards. Then we're moving this one downwards. Yeah, because it starts in the top left. And yeah. 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 What are those? I'm assuming that's W A S D. But let's see, key code 65, what it is. Let's say 65. Um, oh, this is supposed to work for the the um, evil sec. We have not even drawn it yet, though. So we can none of those keywords can work. Yeah. We have to draw the evil sec. After we draw it, then we can test it. <laughs> Yeah, 65 is a 68. We haven't called the function. We haven't even called the function now. So after we call the function, then we can test. Yeah, this should actually be able to move it. Okay, that'll be cool. All right, so now all we have to do is add the collision detect method. Yeah, let's look at. Let's read the last part of that. Listen, okay. If so, when it keeps pressed, the event the keyboard property is consulted to see which keys pressed. If it is one of one of the four represented by specified keyboards, then the evil check if they move left, right, or down. For a bonus point, let us know which key. Oh, we cheat. I, I cheated and I <laughs> I googled mm. it. And which key is it's, the, it's right. uh, W A S D. W A S D has no. I don't I, I don't get that. What W A S D? Another bonus point. Can you tell us why we add the uh, var underscore the position is something to do with function scope? Uh, just to hide it now, so nobody can call it with call it outside 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 the function. Yeah, I think it might return undefined if we just use this, because it'd be. See, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to do that for you on its own. I'm not going to tell you what. Yes. Uh. <coughs> All right, so collision detect. Yeah, thank you, bro. Um, let me find some space in my code to put it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs>
This method will act in a very similar way to Ball's collision detect method. So you can use a copy of that as the basis of this new method, but there are a couple of differences. In the outer if statement, you no longer need to check whether the current ball is in the iteration as if whether the current ball in the iteration is the same as the ball that is doing the checking. Because it is no longer a ball, it is an evil circle. Instead, you need to do a test to see if the ball being checked exists. With which property could you do this with? So <laughs> use this dot exists. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It has already been eaten by the evil circle, so there's no need to check again. So that makes it easy. <laughs> Just use this dot exist. Okay, within the collision. <laughs> So we are looping through, right? Yeah. Okay, let me just copy this one. Right. You're going to have an extra closing bracket. Yeah, delete that one. Delete that curly brace, yep, and you should be good. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and so. Um, we don't need to see if this is equivalent to balls.j. I think we just need to check this dot exists. Okay. The other is that you no longer need to check whether the ball is because you no longer need to just to see if the ball being checked is which 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 property to do this. So we just change the exist property on the ball to false. Okay. After in the second if statement, uh, instead of doing balls j color, do balls j dot exist. And then change that to false. So that'll be whenever a ball runs into. And change what to false? This color. This is the color. Yeah, change that. No, change that whole thing to false. All, all, all of this? Uh, no, from this dot color all the way to the semicolon. In the That's next good. line. Yep. That should all we have to do. That should be all we have to do. Think. Yeah, because whenever a ball will collide with the evil circle, it'll change that ball. Okay. Balls if, exist property to false. If the, if the listen exists, if we enter the first if statement, if it doesn't, it will. Um, if, if, if it. Okay. If you're checking, you're checking if, the, if, if it exists, if, we, if this the exists is true, it will. Um, I think it to create it to move the ball, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if that means if it uh, hasn't um, come in contact with the evil circle, then if distance less than this the ball for the ball the size. Uh, so if the evil circle and one of the balls are overlapping. The evil circle was uh, the addition distance less than. Okay. 
okay, okay, okay. 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 All right, so I think we're on to the next part. Uh, this shit is too long, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can we finish this one today? It's still about how many. Um, should we take a break? Hmm? Uh, you said you wanted to take a break? Yeah, should we take a break? Yeah, I feel like we've been at this almost another two hours. <laughs> yes, yes. My eyes are so good. Yeah, let's, all right, let's uh, take a 10, 15 minute break. Okay, we'll be so back we at 10, 50 or okay. 50 past, whatever the hour is for you. <laughs> I'll tell you 450, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, um, this Wednesday already, so. Okay, all right. All right, I'll see you in a couple. Okay.
So after updating the methods on the evil circle, so adding the draw check bounds, set controls, and collision detect methods, we're on to bringing the evil circle into the program. So now we've defined the evil circle, we need to actually make it appear in our, in our scene. To do this, you need to make some changes to the loop function. So right inside this loop function. So first of all, create a new evil circle object instance specifying the necessary parameters, then call it set controls method. You only need to do these two things once, not on every iteration of the loop. So since it doesn't need to be every iteration of the loop, we can do it either here or outside of it. So I create a variable called evil circle and create a new instance of evil circle, giving it uh, x property, y property, velocity x, velocity y, and then it exists as true, its color is white, and the size is 10. And then I call the set controls method. All right, so at this point where you loop through every ball and call the draw update and collision detect functions for each one, make it so that these functions are also are only called if the current ball exists. So to do that, you come within the loop function and in the for loop, uh, all of these, you just put them inside an if statement. And then the conditional for the if will be if balls i dot exist, because uh, exist, it can only be true or false. So if it's true, the balls will be drawn, but if it's false, uh, the balls won't be drawn, updated, and have collision detection. So then after that, we need to call the evil ball instances draw, check bounds, and collisions detect methods for every iteration of the loop. So outside of the if statement, but inside the for loop, so you can see here's the opening bracket for the for loop, and the closing bracket for it. We call the draw, check bounds, and collision detect, and that's how we get the evil circle here. So the next thing we want to do is implement the score counter. So first thing we do in our HTML file, add a paragraph element just below the H1 uh, with the text ball count. So and give it ball count. And then add this into the CSS so it's not just sitting right there. 
I'm gonna add this all the way to the bottom of it. Um, let's move it down a little more. Let's do, that's too much. Let's about there, you know, and yeah, like 10. I like that. All right. In your JavaScript, make the following updates, create a variable that stores a reference to the paragraph. So let's just do that right before the function, the loop function variable para equal document query selector and that should be So now para has the reference to the paragraph element. And I think that's the only paragraph element, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Keep a count of the number of balls on screen in some way. So maybe variable called count will equal balls.length, which is just the length of the array where all the balls are stored. And then increment the count and display uh, the updated number of balls each time a ball is added to the scene. So, and decrement the count and display the updated number of balls each time the evil circle eats a ball, causes it not to exist. All right, so to finish this project off, we need to add the counter, which we added the paragraph element, the CSS, and we create the variable variable with the reference to it called power. And we create a count variable, which right now is equal to zero. And so we want to increment the count and display the updated number of balls each time a ball is added to the scene. So every time a new ball instance is created, we want to increase the counter. And then we also want to change the text content. Of the paragraph element to say ball count and then use a template literal to put the count variable in and then correctly shows the 25 balls and now see even though the evil circle is eating a ball the count isn't changing if we finally see it stays at 25. So we need to decrement the count and display the updated number of balls each time the evil circle eats a ball. So that happens in the collision detection of the evil circle. So each time the distance of the evil circle is overlapping with one of the balls, we wanna change the count variable. 
we want to decrease it by one. And then we want to update the paragraph text content to be the updated version of the count. So now when the evil circle eats something, the ball count changes. And that's the adding features to the bouncing ball assessment.